Hello guys, FAD here and welcome back to yet another video on the channel. First things first, Happy New Year everyone. I'm wishing you all the best successes, great health and of course happiness all across 2022. Uh, as I'm recording this actually, it is New Year's Eve, the 31st. I've got no plans because I'm a loser. Uh, but that doesn't matter because that does leave me with a, a nice little open window to record this uh, mini video for you guys. Or at least I hope it will be a mini video. But knowing me, it's probably going to go on for longer than I uh, originally anticipated. CD collection videos are nothing new for my channel. However, usually what I do is just I upload a whole new CD collection video every once in a while and then I, you know, delete the old one so I can have like one big video that just showcases my, you know, up-to-date collection. But instead of doing that this time, because my last update was way back in April, that doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Time flies, everyone. Uh, the last video in April took a long time to make. I mean, these videos are always long, but like at this point, my collection has gone to a point where these videos are like over an hour long, and I just can't keep like I can't manage to like keep them short because I just love to talk a lot. Uh, so what I'm doing this time is instead of doing uh, an, an uh, entirely new video, I'm just going to be showing you guys. Uh, I'm just gonna be. This video is just gonna be a little update. I'm going to show. I'm going to be showing only the CDs that I have acquired since my last uh, collection video. Before I get into it, uh, I do need to mention, of course, the fact that I have been gone for a little while, and of course, there is a good reason for that, as of course I have started studying journalism, loving life, or at least that's something I wish I could say, but. Yeah, it's just been difficult, it's been very hectic for me. I've managed to upload a video here and there, like I uploaded the one Bad Wolves, <laughs> think uh, more on that later, the one Bad Wolves album review uh, uh, some time ago, but it's just been very difficult to find you know, the time and motivation as well, because you know, it's just been with how hectic everything's been. It's, it's just been really difficult to you know find like some free space or some free window uh, in my sh schedule and think, you know, that I'm, I'm going to start working on a YouTube video, because yeah. Uh, I know it's a terrible excuse, but I hope you guys understand. Uh, but without any more further ado, let's just get into these CDs before this video turns out to be an hour anyway. Uh, so I'm going to be going uh, through these in a similar order as I usually uh, do. And that's of course alphabetical order of the artists. And let's say I have more than one CD from one artist, then uh, those will be in chronological order, you know, the one that they came out in. Simple. So let's get started. The first CD here uh, we're starting with numbers is 12 Stones with their second album in Potter's Field. Uh, this is actually quite a recent pickup, one of my most recent pickups. Uh, it's an album that I've kind of had my eyes on for quite some time. Uh, just never really got around to picking it up since it's not really anything too special. It's basically your regular mid 2000s slash early 2000s new metal record. Uh, but you know, I'm a big new, I'm, I'm a junkie for new metal, so I, I, I do appreciate this album. I think uh, it's you know, it's pretty good. I was a fan of their first album, which I already owned, and I thought, why not get this one as well? I also found it for a very good price. So, yeah, that's the story behind that. Moving on, we've got Adelita's Way Stuck. Now, I had uh, the two previous Adelita's Way albums, because this is their third. Uh, I already had the previous two, uh, but... Uh, and I really didn't care too much for, like, their later discography, but this one album in particular caught my eye because... At the time, I remember it wasn't even on any streaming services, at least it wasn't on Spotify. And then, at, at one point, it, they did put it on Spotify, but then it was the censored version, so that just kind of motivated me to just say, screw it, and go out and buy an actual copy of the uncensored version. And uh, what do you know, I actually really do dig this album. I don't like it as much as the first two, but it's still a very solid uh, release. And uh, a little fun story with uh, me buying this as well is actually I bought this like in the middle of my exam period, uh, like my final exams uh, before I graduated this past summer. I was in the middle of that. I don't know if it was like in, like if I was already. I think I was already in the middle of like actually doing my exams, uh, like in that that week or two. I don't. Even, I think it was like two weeks the whole period. Uh, and I remember I, 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 I spent, I remember on that one particular day, I don't remember exactly what day it was, I spent more time uh, tracking down a nice cheap copy. Uh, I put more, more effort into that than into studying for whatever exam I had coming up. So in the middle of my exams, I was just doing this. And I remember at the time, I was kind of strapped for cash because I, I was out of a job. But I still managed to get some euros together to uh, get this. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> 
Moving on, uh, this album, which uh, I was talking about uh, a few minutes ago. Bad Wolves, Dear Monsters, their newest album, uh, which came out earlier this year, or I guess when this video comes out last year, 2021, oh my god. It's crazy to think about that, how crazy, how fast this year went by, but the newest Bad Wolves album, which recently came out, I, uh, if you want to hear my proper thoughts on it, uh, watch my review. Uh, and yeah, what can I say, the, fir the first album of the new singer, and I I I'm a big fan of it, I really do like this new uh, direction, and uh, yeah, they, this, this album kind of, you know, re-inspired me like re like refilled my hope for this band's future and uh, that makes me very happy because uh, i saw them live once uh, opening for three days grace and since then i've been a massive fan so good to see them still going strong despite the singer change uh moving on we've got uh even though you can't really uh, see it it is um uh, it is uh, bring me the horizons that's the spirit so I've never really been a huge Bring Me The Horizon fan uh, until, I don't know, like maybe around a year ago or something like that uh, when I kind of started listening to this album in particular. I stumbled across Happy Song uh, and then I just kind of you know, followed the, that up with listening to the whole album from there. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, you no, know, Enough for me you know, to buy an actual copy of it. So, yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, yeah, that's the spirit. Um... Uh, I'm actually ordering these right because that's actually very important. I am not. Uh -huh. Moving on, uh, we have a pretty underrated and underground album from the early to mid 2000s scene with Closures, uh, 2003 self titled album. Uh, Closure, so. First things first, this album is a product of me going online and just scrolling through various, uh, you know, lower tier 2000s bands that never really made it big, never really uh, hit their big break. Uh, I, I, that's just something that I do quite frequently actually. And this just happened to be one of the albums that I really liked and I managed to find a copy online for a decent price as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, if, you, if you are a fan of, if you have a similar music taste to me, so that's like shitty rock music from the 2000s, then I recommend uh, giving this a shot. Another really cool thing about this is actually this band, Closure, the lead singer of this band, Brian Howes, you might know him from producing for some other pretty big names in the rock scene down the line after his band failed, like for instance, Hinder. Uh, so yeah, I didn't even realize that until like after I started listening to this record. Uh, I was like, oh wait, I recognize that name, that's, yeah. Uh, Brian House, but you usually see him as uh, you know in the production credits, not as you know part of the band. So I just thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, another thing to you know some fun new metal slash post grunt trivia. Yeah, uh, moving on, uh, we got Cold Chamber self titled. Well, as a new metal fanboy, I had to get my hands on this record. At one point or another, I mean, it was kind of a disgrace that I had did not have it in my collection yet, but yeah. What can I say? 90s new metal. Uh, you know, you know, no. Cold Chamber came out around the same time as Corn and Slipknot, and you know they have that you know very dark undertone, that really you know horror-like atmosphere. Uh, and while I definitely, I always liked their sound. I never really liked it enough to like really like think, oh yeah, I need to buy a copy. Uh, and I again, did, me owning this was also pure coincidence because I didn't go, actually go out my way to order it online. Uh, we actually went out. I went out with a couple of uh, friends from school, uh, from study friends, uh, into the city, and we have a, a little record shop there. And uh, while I was there, I just st I stumbled across this CD uh, among others. Uh, we'll more on that later. Uh, and I, I just I didn't want to leave with empty hands, so I decided to buy it, and that's it. Because it's just like an album that I, I mean, as a new metal fan, you gotta have it, and that's the story there. Uh, so yeah, nothing more interesting. Continuing, we have, and I just gotta show these together, because I also bought them together, we have the first two Crazy Town albums, yes, speaking of new metal, you know, we got The Gift of Game, and the pretty underrated, actually, Dark Horse, the follow-up, which failed miserably. So, of course, Crazy Town uh, was a band that blew up uh, in the early 2000s with their hit single, Butterfly, which is a bop still, I will admit that. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, it's just another one, kind of similar to Cold Chamber, it's like a band which uh, for years, you know, I, they were in the back of my head as like potential CDs that I could buy, I uh, just never really got around to it because I wasn't a massive fan of their music, like I like Butterfly, but to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the rest of their uh, first record. Dark Horse, on the other hand, is a very, 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 I mean, it's a very, you know, standard new metal album, but because, again, my music taste... I actually do quite enjoy it, so I actually prefer that one more, and I've actually listened to that one more than The Gift of Game. Uh, 
Uh, and if you haven't checked that one out and you are a fan of new metal yourself, then you should, uh, even though it's not on Spotify, so you'd have to like go on YouTube or whatever. So it, I understand if you don't want to go through the hassle, but Crazy Town uh, got, got them both together for a pretty good deal. Uh, yeah, finally got my hands on some more new metal heritage, as you do. Uh, continuing on, we have Decipher Down with their first album, End of Grey. Uh, their own, uh, the, uh, so yeah, Christian band, their debut, their only album with their original singer before uh, that spot was switched uh, for their follow-up, which is Crash, which I already do own. And uh, yeah, this was kind of a random buy. Uh, nothing much I can really say. It's a great, it's a good album. It's a good Christian rock album, man. That, that's all I can say. Solid, solid. Uh, after that, we got Default with Comes and Goes, the final album from this uh, 2000s post-grunge relic of a group. And uh, you know, keep this in mind, because you know, th this may or may not have something to do with a video idea that I have lined up. Because yes, even though I have not been uploading for a while, I do still have some ideas in my head that might be coming out soon. So uh, be on the lookout for that, and it might be connected to this. So Default Comes and Goes, actually a very underrated album. You know, Default, uh, I'm not going to say too much, but let's just say that, you know... Their later work, I think their later releases were a lot stronger than uh, when they st uh, the ones from uh, when they started. Uh, the latter half of their discography was just, I don't know, for me, has many more gems than the first half. Uh, and this is a very solid album, actually. And uh, as soon as I, I just kind of randomly stumbled across it a few months back, and I just kind of really fell in love with it. I, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's, it's got some awesome ballads. Uh, some fun tracks as well, some fun rockers. It's just a, no, it's, it is a standard post grunge record, but a very good one at that, and I really do recommend checking it out. I, had to, I actually had to go from, through quite a lot of trouble to track down a copy. Uh, uh, I had to like f search for good deals on eBay, and then I finally tracked one down, which was actually a brand new, still sealed after all these years. And then, like, a couple of weeks after that, it appeared brand new on like my, the site that I always use to buy CDs, and that kind of pissed me off a little bit but rant over moving on we got digital summer counting the hours another some yeah, somewhat smaller band some people might uh, recognize them from social media a few years back I remember the band members would uh, often just random follow people on Instagram uh, you know in the hope that they would you know those people would follow them back and then they would unfollow them when they followed back and they kind of did that I guess to, you know spread spread the word uh, I remember because I was one of those people they followed, uh, and that was actually that was the first time I heard of Digital Summer. But I never really bothered to really check out their music at the time uh, until quite recently, where I stumbled across this record online, uh, and I really loved it. I, I like I don't know this album is really underrated in my opinion, front to back. It's just a very solid rocker. Uh, the title track is epic, and it just and it it's, it's also the opener, and it doesn't let up from there. Uh, as you can see, it's also a signed copy because also this was an album which was uh. Ooh. Tracking down a copy for this was one of the most like this is this is one of my most proud purchases ever because I remember look going through eBay finding co there were like f two or three copies of this all for like hundred like a hundred bucks uh, and I, there's no way I was gonna pay a hundred bucks for this even though there were some days where I may or may not have considered it. Uh, like I was looking everywhere, man. I even tried emailing the dead site from uh, the band's dead website. Like I was that desperate. And then on a random summer's day, I was on a holiday with my friends. I was kind of depressed at the time because it was one, of, like I, I believe it was one of our final days before we had to leave again before we went back. I, I just I, I decided why not check out eBay again, see if there's any new deals for this album. And what do you know? I saw an amazing deal for like 25 bucks, which was mega cheap. So I immediately went for it. Uh, and then it turned out to be a signed copy as well so just a nice little bonus and yeah like I said one of my most proud purchases you know, of my entire collection continuing on we've got uh, Disciple with Scars Remain Disciple is uh, another Christian band uh, one of my favorite Christian rock bands I really got into recently uh, and yeah especially the, uh, this album and uh, I might as well get to it already uh, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades uh, by the way excuse the fireworks people are dumb and can't wait till midnight uh, so yeah, but anyway, uh, Disciple, these two albums uh, in particular, I really, really uh, fell in love with. Uh, like, especially, you know, the opener on this, Dear X, You Don't Know Me, is an absolute banger. I've had that song on repeat for, like, the past uh, few months. Uh, and yeah, just a very solid band. Christian rock, I am, I, I like Christian rock. Anyone who follows the channel will know that. Oops. Uh, and yeah, this is just one of my, this has uh, recently beca become one of my favorite Christian rock bands. And yeah, that's all I have to say. 
After that, we have another new uh, 2021 release, which is Gemini Syndrome with Free, and I always forget the title of this damn record, so uh, forgive me for that. Third Degree, The Raising. Yes, uh, Gemini Syndrome's third album, finally completing the trilogy after all these years, like five years after the release of Memento Mori. Uh, Gemini Syndrome are one of my favorite modern bands, like one of my favorite bands that you know, like came out in the tw during the 2010s. Uh, and yeah, I was looking forward to this album for ages, for years, and I was because ever ever since I heard that they you know the original plan was always to for them to have a trilogy of albums. I was like, okay, can't wait till part three because I loved uh, their debut, Lux. I loved Memento Mori, and I just couldn't wait to uh, see what they had in store for this uh, finale of the trilogy. Uh, Took longer than expected, but it's finally here, and what can I say, it's not my favorite Gemini Syndrome record, but it's, it's another great album. Gemini Syndrome are, they're not that, they're a band where like, you know what you're gonna get, they're, they don't really veer too much, to, uh, veer away too much from their style, but they don't have to in my opinion. Uh, I really do dig their sound, and this is just a very solid album, uh, definitely one of my albums of the year. Uh, yeah. And after that, we got, so moving on from that, we are moving back to the 2000s, the mid-2000s, with Hoobastank. Hell yeah, the band, of course, known for their uh, huge hit, The Reason. This is the album after The Reason, Every Man For Himself, uh, which is actually a fan-favorite album uh, amongst fans online. I noticed that many people always put this uh, at number one as their favorite Hoobastank release. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I can see where those people are coming from. It is a bit more of a... Uh, heavy record like it's not re it's n it's not like the reason where there's like a bunch of love songs you know the 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 topics vary a lot more and it, yeah I, I can't see why people would like this record I never really got into it as much as I did for instance with the reason or self-titled but it's still a solid album and uh, yeah the last Hoobas Tank album to get any certification from the RIAA that's all I can say uh, and I also bought uh, the next Hubas Tank album after that, their fourth one, which is For Never. And as you can see, it's actually a Japanese release. This one uh, I bought because I, st I don't know, I actually prefer this over Every Man for Himself, I think. I don't know, it's just, it's got a bunch of underrated gems on here. It's a very underrated uh, record in general. I even considered uh, making a video all about this album specifically. Uh, who knows if anything will ever come out of that idea or not. I guess time will tell, but whatever, don't get too hopeful. Uh, but it's a, it's a very solid album. It's got some great songs on it, like Sick of Hanging On, uh, My Turn, uh, I Don't Think I Love You. It's a very underrated album. If you haven't checked it out and you have been a fan of some other Hoobastank stuff, then I guess I recommend it. But as you can see, like I said, Japanese version, I ordered this from China and it took months to get here. This was stuck in like various points of transit. Like I, I ordered this when I was like on holiday with classmates. Uh, past summer and it didn't arrive until well into my academic year so yeah the, I was actually kinda shocked when it did arrive to be honest but that's the story after that we got and this is actually a pretty interesting one we got Carnival with Tamada Tamada I don't know how to say it whatever doesn't matter Carnival this is a great great record uh, some progressive new metal uh, I guess is how I would classify it uh, but the real interesting thing about this is because is that I actually decided to check this uh, check this band out and also buy uh, no in turn also buy this CD and its follow up as I also do have Carnival's second album Sound Awake. Uh, I decided to get into this band because of a recommendation from a, a subscriber uh, on my last uh, CD collection update in April. Someone uh, recommended them to me and I was like, okay, I'll check them out. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, they said that uh, especially the first album had some new metal elements to it, and that with like my music taste, I uh, there was potential that I could like it. And what do you know? I really, really loved it. Uh, so I went about tracking down a copy, uh, managed to find uh, this uh, CD in Taiwan, brand new. Uh, very happy with that. And then uh, sometime later, I also bought their second album, which I don't like as much as their first because they 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 kind of lost a bit of their new metal edge here, and you know focused more on the progressive side of things, which is not bad. But I am just a new metal junkie, like I said before. So yeah, I really love this album, especially it's underrated as hell, and I love it. I recommend it to everyone. <laughs> After that, we have uh, Mud Veins with a new new game. So Mud Vein, of course, this was also a funny story because uh, when I did my CD uh, uh, collection video in April, 
in that video, uh, as I was going through my Mudvayne albums, I mentioned that you know I really wanted Mudvayne to get back together, but I, and then I also said that they probably never would. And like a couple of days, like mere days after I uh, uh, posted that video, uh, Mudvayne announced that they were back together. So that was hilarious to me, and uh, also made me very happy, of course. Uh, but yeah. Uh, me buying this album didn't necessarily have anything to do with that uh, specifically. Uh, this was another circumstantial buy, as I actually bought this album together with Cold Cha with, with the Cold Chamber CD uh, on that same trip to the record store with uh, with my study mates. Uh, yeah, it's an album which I always considered getting because, like, I, I I always dug the singles, like, you know, the most well-known tracks from here, like "Do What You Do," "Scarlet Letters," uh, but I never really. I know I never really cared too much for the rest of the album. At least I never really checked it out. Never really bothered to check it out. And then I just saw it in the store for again for cheap. And I was like, hey, why not? I love Mudvayne. They're back together. Screw it. And now I have this album as well. So yeah. <laughs> and then after that we have uh, again one of my most recent purchases with Sent by Ravens, Our Graceful Words, another Christian band and a very underrated one at that. They only released two albums. Uh, with this one being their first and this one probably being my favorite, it's massively underrated. I recommend you to check it out. It's, uh, it's awesome. Alright, we're slowly starting to wrap things up. This video is already going on for way longer than I thought, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Moving on, we have Small Empty Soul with More Anxiety, the re-release of uh, Anxiety, which actually not really a re-release because Anxiety never officially was released because it was shelved uh, back in like 2005. Uh, and then in 2012, I think it was, the band uh, finally got to give it a proper release with some bonus tracks. And uh, that's this. Uh, I'm a huge Smile Empty Soul fan. They released a, 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 They also released a... Excuse me. They also released a new album in 2021, Black Pill, which uh, I thought was okay. And uh, yeah, but I especially love Old School Smile Empty Soul. So like from self-titled, you know, consciousness, uh, chemicals, just great stuff. A very underrated band. If you haven't checked them out and you're a fan of, you know, edgy 2000s rock, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And uh, this album in particular, not one of my favorite uh, Smile Empty Soul albums, but, you know, especially for, you know, collector purposes, I felt, I just felt I needed to have it. And it is a good album still. Uh, you know, officially, I guess, their second album uh, after their uh, gold certified debut. But yeah, enough of that. After that, we have an uh, interesting one. I'm actually gonna, these are, these are actually two CDs once again. Uh, since October, with their First album, This Is My Heart, and then Life Scars Apologies. Did I say the title right? I'm always so, yeah, Life Scars Apologies. I'm always so paranoid about that. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, another Christian uh, group, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they only ever released these two albums. They never really took off. They were pretty, uh, yeah, I mean, relatively underground. Uh, their most well-known song was from their second album, uh, uh, I believe, with uh, The Way You Move, which is a super catchy track, and it's actually how I found out about them. And uh, yeah, I never really planned on buying their st uh, their albums, but then I found both these records for dirt cheap online here in the Netherlands, uh, and I was like, okay, I just I, why not? I mean, honestly, I think I got both these together, including shipping for like less than ten euros. So and they're both in great condition as well. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, so yeah, the inner collector in me just just I mean I, I had to cure the itch, so I bought both of them, and it turned out to be good purchases. Like I said, I really do like both albums. After that, we have Thousand Foot Crutch, going back to the Christian rock, baby, uh, with The Flame and All of Us, uh, an album which actually is, I mean, I consider to be relatively underrated in their discography, as, uh, I mean, it's not really underrated, I mean, it, it had its hits, like uh, the, the title track, Falls Apart, but I don't know, like, uh, when I first got into Thousand Foot Crutch, like, the albums that, you know, the first albums I, like, I took notice of were like Phenomenon, uh, The End Is Where We Begin, uh, stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, this album is actually a very, very great release as well. Uh, this is actually my most recent pickup, as I actually got this for Christmas. You know, Christian rock, Christmas, it just made sense. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, but yeah, uh, I only recently picked this up because tracking down a copy for a good price was very difficult for a long time. I wanted to get this album a lot earlier, actually, because Thousand Foot Crutch is, again, one of my favorite, not even just Christian rock bands, just one of my favorite bands in general. Uh, really, really hoping that they uh, put out another record soon. Uh, the, the lead singer, Trevor, uh, he's been sort of teasing people on the social media but like i know it could be some other project as well but i'm desperately hoping it's another tfk album uh but yeah so i eventually managed to get my hands on this record because out of the blue it appeared on the site where i usually get my cds uh same thing actually happened and
and my phone is running out of space, which is a <laughs> which is a great sign telling me that this video is going on for way too long, that way longer than it should have. So I'm going to try to wrap things up quickly. But as I was saying before, I was interrupted by my phone shutting off. Uh, where was I? Yes. Okay. So uh, I bought this album because suddenly, out of the blue, a new, a brand new copy appeared on the site where I usually, uh, where well, I mean not usually, but where I often buy my CDs. Uh, and the same thing actually happened with the Sent by Ravens album too, so I actually ordered them together, but uh, this is the one that I saved for Christmas. Uh, and yeah, what can I say, it's a, great, it's a great record, I mean, it's got some awesome ballads as well, which I, I have to say, What Do We Know and Wish You Well, which is a track that, to me personally, has really meant a lot. It's, uh, you know... We all, you know, we all can relate to the music we listen to, like, uh, a lot, but it sometimes there's like that like that one song which just like hits perfectly where it's like you can almost swear it's like written by you it's like about your life or about something you're going through that's one song which has really hit that way for me uh in recent months and uh yeah it, every time i listen to it i just can't help but get a little emotional and uh but yeah all in all great tfk album hoping for more from this band uh soon uh and then uh staying within the vein of tfk as uh here we have Deja Vu, uh, the Thousand Foot Crutch Anthology. So, cool story. So, this is a, uh, a little free album set, I guess you could say. Uh, for, uh, basically, uh, including free uh, TFK albums, Phenomenon, uh, The Art of Breaking, and the aforementioned uh, The Flame in All of Us. Uh, so, the reason why I got this, uh, because this, uh, it's actually a bit useless now, not really. I mean, it's still fun to have for collector reasons. Uh, it's actually very similar to the other... Christian Rock set, a uh, free CD set I own, uh, because I own also uh, Who We Are, the Red Anthology, which is basically the same thing but for Red and their first three albums. Uh, it's like the same packaging and everything. Uh, the reason why I originally bought this, because of course I already owned two of these three albums at the time, I already owned Phenomenon and The Art of Breaking, is, as I said, er as I said earlier, I had some trouble finding a good, you know, uh, good copy of The Flame and All of Us, you know, at a decent price for like quite some time, uh, and in the middle of that I actually found this for like a fiver online, which for free CDs, for like a free CD set was crazy in my opinion, so my logic at the time was okay i'll just get this free d set and then i'll have my 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 physical version of the flame and all of us of course it didn't completely uh, scratch the itch and eventually i finally did get my hands on an actual copy of the flame and all of us but uh, this was my reasoning behind originally getting it so now it's kind of useless because of course i already own all three cd uh, all three of these albums separately at the same time it's a fun uh, set to own for collector reasons so yeah that's the fun story like i, I didn't even know this existed uh, to be honest with you, so uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys did, but there we go, deja vu. And then uh, again, staying still with Thousand Foot Crotch, we have Exhale, which to this day still stands as their most recent release, even though it came out in like 2016. So yeah, it is a digipack, which of course uh, I hate, but I bit the bullet on this one, not because it's like a super spectacular album or anything, it's actually, I mean, it's not a bad album, I think it's better than the one that came before this, which was Inhale, uh, Oxygen Inhale, it's uh, because that one was like a very experimental album, this is just kind of back to basics, but yeah, it's basically, it, it, it's back to basics, it's, it's very basic Thousand Foot Crotch, uh, if you are a TFK fan, then you will enjoy it like I did, I definitely do like this album, but uh, at the same time, basically all the stuff that they do on this record, they already have done and they've already actually also done better on previous releases. But again, it's still a solid uh, album. And the main reason why I decided uh, to get a copy myself was because, uh, well, it's not available on any streaming services. At least it's not available on Spotify. Uh, so I thought, hey, if you can't even listen to an album on Spotify, then I guess that's just a better reason to get a physical copy these days, right? So uh, yeah, that's why I bought a copy of Exhale. And again, Hopefully, this will not be the newest TFK album for long. But we are now, we have now reached the end of the line. The final album of this update is Young Guns with Bones. Now, this album is uh, pretty underrated, actually. So, Young Guns, uh, they kind of broke through at the time with their uh, hit single, which is the lead single. Uh, and the title track of this record, Bones, uh, would be uh, a little, 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 I can't speak, it's almost the end of the video. 
Okay, <laughs> focus. Uh, Bones, the title track of this record, uh, topped the mainstream rock chart back in like 2012. It also was one of the theme songs for WrestleMania uh, in 2013. And it was a banger. It is a banger. I, I think it's still probably my favorite track on this uh, on this album. And it was also my main motivation behind getting my hands on a, on a copy of this. Uh, alongside the fact that you know, the price was mad. It was like a tenor with no shipping. And I was like, hey, why not? Uh, very similar to Lost Profits. <laughs> It is a British band, of course, and they actually toured together with Lost Profits at the time. Uh, uh, and yeah, it's kind of like a more, it's kind of a more anthemic, more stadium rocky, less pedo Lost Profits, I guess you could say. Uh, and yeah, this album in particular, I'm a really big fan of it. It's pretty underrated. Uh, I recommend you guys check it out. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's my collection update. It went on for very long. I'm sorry about that, but that's just how things go on this channel. If my, whenever a video has no script, then it will be a long ramble. But some of you guys might enjoy that. Some others probably not so much. But don't worry. For those people who, <laughs> for those specific people, uh, I do have something else. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say in the works, I have something else planned, I have an actual proper video with a script, uh, with editing, stuff like that. Uh, it, uh, the script is basically finished, it's just a matter of me actually getting off my ass and doing it, so uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully it'll still come out sometime within the next couple of weeks, at least that's what I'm hoping for, so pray for me guys. But anyways, that's it for this video, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Once more, I want to wish you guys a happy and uh, healthy 20, uh, 2022. Uh, and yeah, may it be a great year for all of us. Uh, and yeah, hopefully I, it will be also another year of uh, semi-consistent uploads. Because to be honest, 2021 was a pretty good year for me in terms of that. I It was a bit hit or miss, like it was kind of patchy. But I had some periods where, you know, I uh, uploaded a lot more than, you know, my I usually did beforehand. So uh, hopefully I can kind of continue that trend into the new year. But for now, my name is FAD. And I'm going to see you guys in my next video. Bye.